Yusuf, I know that it's been such an important talking point in the banking sector and a lot of money is chasing greener projects and sustainable projects, but I'm hearing this from many CEOs. There just aren't enough bankable projects at this point in time. It speaks to what Linda is saying right now. So when we, as a banker, as the, you know, you hold the purse strings, um, how do we Africanize projects for you to want to invest in? What are you seeing? Where are the gaps that are coming through? I know that Egypt, Morocco, and South Africa have done really well with wind and hydro um, and solar, but there's still so much room uh, for the rest of the continent to grow. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Eleni. Thank you very much for inviting me to, to, to this event and uh, to give the opportunity to share the experience of Tijero of a bank as a commercial bank, as a Pan-African bank in the field of energy transition and climate change. Uh, like, like you have said, actually, we are facing a massive paradox in the continent. Actually, we, the continent contains the largest natural resources at scale, whether wind, hydro, solar, or geothermal, and they account for the main bulk of the production. But uh, at the same time, 600 million Africans simply don't get access to electricity. So the challenge is not so much to migrate from coal to renewable. It's really to build the capacity, uh, knowing that the urbanization is growing and the population will double over the 20 next years. So the challenge is really to put ahead the capacity to build viable projects and bankable projects. And from our perspective as a Pan-African bank, Morocco was an interesting benchmark where a large capacity in the area of green project finance have been deployed over the 20 last years, thanks to a double factor, which one, it is the governance framework and regulation which made that put ahead and which was very important in order to give the visibility and the vision to all the sponsors. The other thing, is the financial sector that has implemented capabilities in the project finance area with appropriate structures in terms of size, tenor, and, and rates. Now, the question is absolute, absolutely crucial. How can we do more? How can we Africanize green infrastructure? Well, first, maybe the, the, the project finance uh, to a large scale renewable energy and green projects is a key driver. How can we do more in the project finance area? In our case, uh, as a Tijari Wafa Bank, we have committed to financing green projects for over 1 billion euro over the last 10 years and uh, 1,700 megawatts in terms of renewables. We've uh, financed many projects in, the, in wind farms or hydro with many sponsors, Moroccan ones or uh, international ones like NG or NL for hundreds of megawatts in, in Morocco. And we've done it through local currency schemes or syndications. Uh, but, of course, the, the, the more important challenge is to get the appropriate governance, the regulation, as Linda uh, put ahead, the availability of grids, and the appropriate scheme in terms of IPP, with the viable off-takers, sponsors, response from the banking and financial sectors. The other thing maybe is specific to our continent is the question of risk perception and the couple between risk and return perception in Africa. This is one of the main issues we are facing on the continent. And what we've seen is that in some cases, syndication can help. One of the last projects we financed in Cameroon was the hydro projects of 400 megawatts of Nachtigal. We've done it through a syndication with 14 banks, local banks, international banks, both in local and foreign currencies. So syndication may add some specific capacity. And the third, maybe the third factor is really the access to long-term liquidity because in many cases we see that the maturity issue is key given that commercial banks in sub-saharan africa due to specific regulations are in, often enabled to finance projects at maturities exceeding 10 to 12 years so how to access to maturities that can fit the specifics of the project finance areas this is where accreditations like a uh, green climate fund in which we are accredited as a commercial bank. So it enables us to channel concessional loans to Africa and syndications can also help uh, address this challenge of the maturity. And finally, the last point I would like to make is that we need also diversification of funding. Beyond banking, we need also capital markets and to improve fiscal reforms that can channel, uh, channel domestic capital, African capital to finance project finance and so this is also key to uh, uh, give more space 
to project finance and to financing specifically uh, local projects in the continent. We have so many questions from the audience and I'm going to take some of them because I fear that we're not going to have enough time at the end. And Yusuf, I'm going to ask you uh, one question from uh, Musaope Mtamba. Why is bankability always around conventional models and thinking? Isn't there a way to measure or determine bankability, especially in uh, the African perspective? Like, look, you mentioned risk. You mentioned perceptions of risks. We know, we know that capital is a lot more expensive on the continent. And here we're saying we need to change those perceptions or like, you know, rethink the risk model. You're a banker. There's no one more prudent on the, perhaps Linda, but there's no one more prudent on the panel, I would say. So tell me, can we rethink the bankability model? Yeah, well, well, well thank you for this uh, very crucial question. Actually, uh, as a bank, we are looking to uh, the conditions of bankability, which uh, include uh, the quality of sponsors, of developers, the legal framework, the governance scheme, the quality of the off-taker, you have all the criteria that go into, into this. This is the general pattern of risk assessment, but there, is, there are specific patterns in the continent related to the capacity of the local actors, mainly in terms of maturity, in terms of size, in terms of currency. Trying to do, depending on the countries, is to adapt really every project to the specifics of every country. Let's take Morocco, for instance. In Morocco, you have a banking system that is able to finance 20 years tenor on a single project finance scheme. So we've financed as a bank 1,700 megawatts in wind farms on maturities going between 20 to 20 years with syndication that is done among Moroccan banks and in some cases with international banks with a good viability project, good return, and good viability on the, on, on the large scale. You got some specifics concerning the solar system. In Morocco, you've got the Moroccan solar energy that started and enhanced a very major project in the solar, but with kind of subsidy, with the Moroccan solar energy that gets some, some subsidies that is injected into the project to get the tariffs viable and the return correct for the investor in order to, to scale up. In Sub-Saharan Africa, with another equation that is available, local banks don't finance above 10 years, so we try to get into large syndication with IFC, with multilateral banks, we try to onboard with the Green Climate Fund to channel concessional loans into the projects to get projects done. I spoke about hydroelectric project of 400 megawatts in Cameroon with Nachtigal, it was done, a long-term tenor, it was bankable and viable and the risk was taken. We've done a lot of other projects in, um, in Egypt, and I can give some other projects. So there are conditions of viability, but we are trying to adapt mainly the maturity, the mix between the local and the foreign currency, and to, to get more actors, because you've got some issues regarding the size of the balance sheet of the banks in some, in, in some countries. And you get to negotiate the appropriate off-taking and IPP project with the off-taker. It takes time. There is not only financing, there is also the structuring phase of the project to get the projects to the market. And this is one of the issues. We've got the two issues to solve all together. And that's why syndication and we need more actors to combine their effort on the ground to get, to get projects done. But we have uh, the overall picture is that we got as a bank financing projects in Northern Africa, Egypt or, or, or Tunisia, in Central Africa, and even in Western Africa, in Ivory Coast or Senegal with hydro projects or solar projects, for instance. So it's possible. Yusuf, I'm going to come to you. Oh, there we go. Can green infrastructure bridge Africa's infrastructure gap? Yes or no? This is going to be an interesting one, I think. Yusuf. Um, we were, you know, in terms of the regulatory environment and regulation has come up quite a bit. Tell me about your experience on how Morocco developed a regulatory environment and the framework that allowed green infrastructure projects to take off. Yeah, very good question, Eleni. Thank you. This is a very key question, which is at the origin of the takeoff in the energy space, energy renewable space in Morocco. Uh, as bankers, we've seen in the late 90s, the very first uh, project finance scheme that has been done. Initially, it wasn't renewable, it was still thermic coal plant, but it was the first way, the first 
IPP we've seen on the project finance deal that has been done. And Morocco has de developed all, uh, a whole framework in, in PPP space. You got in 2006 a law on dedicated management of public services that was enacted. There was in 2014 a law on the public and private partnership that was set up. And uh, there was a whole uh, a massive project finance that come up after these laws have been enacted. And so large scale green projects like uh, wind farms in the north of Morocco, in the south, you got the solar energy uh, projects that have, I have mentioned, etc. So this is for the PPP framework. But you got also another area in the legal framework that has been set, which is specific to green infrastructure. And first, there is the, the constitution in Morocco that identifies sustainable development as a fundamental right to the citizens. But also, you've got the emergence of a national strategy for sustainable development that has been done. And also a national energy strategy, a law, a specific law that encourages the realization and uh, exploitations of facilities for producing electricity from renewable energy sources by private investors. In this specific case, as a private developer, you can sell your electricity to industry through the network. And this is regulated by a specific law on green uh, energy. The third thing I would like to mention is also the involvement of the financial authorities in Morocco. You got the Moroccan Central Bank, which was very active on the, on the topic. They have established the roadmap for the Moroccan banks uh, by aligning local financial system with sustainable development goals and integrating environmental and social risk into the investment decisions of the Moroccan banks. Uh, moreover, the central bank also have authorized many banks in Morocco to develop project finance uh, above the limit of the concentration ratio, because if you take the size of the project, in many cases, you exceed your limit in terms of concentration. And the Moroccan bank for all the renewable energy had given specific authorizations to go beyond and to get the financing done. And also the financial, the market, financial market authorities have also uh, in, been involved on the green bond area. As a bank, we have, uh, we have issued the very first green bond for the Moroccan solar energy. It was just 100 million euro, but it was a start. To, to get the financing uh, down to the to the central finance. So there is this whole ecosystem in terms of legal framework that has been developed year after year that have made it possible in the case of Morocco, for instance. Great opportunity, strategic momentum for the continent to engage massively on the new renewable space, mobilizing the local actors, uh, getting the domestic capital injected into the, the projects, and getting engaged with the public authorities into uh, a very uh, intensive dialogue in order to make the projects viable and bankable. Fantastic. Thank you very much.